Hello and welcome to A Time to Reconcile. I'm Pastor Tom Pickett. Thank you for joining with us today. My wife and I are together in our living room recording this message. The sermon message today is, What do we do as the children of light? You know, Jesus came to us as the light of the world. But when he was here, they rejected the people, rejected him. He was not received as the light of the world. So, you now he's passed that on to us. Because we are believers in Him, we are now the light of the world. Uh, he spoke the truth in love, is what He did in His ministry. And then the Father drawed people to Him to share with Him the light of the world that He was. And then they received it, and they began to understand what it meant. And we want to understand what it means for us today, too. So let's begin over in John 1. Go to John 1, the Gospel of John. I'm reading from the NIV version, so whatever version you have, it, I would ask that you would take your Bible out, turn to John 1, and, and go along with us down to verse 14. John 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So in the Old Testament, He was the Word. And when the Father, our Father, who loved us so much he sent him to us, he came to us as Jesus. He was with God in the beginning, and through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of the world. The light shines. Now let me go back to verse 4. I didn't finish it. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Because it cannot. You know, light, when you turn on a light switch, the darkness flees from the room. Because the light overcomes the darkness, not the other way around. In verse 6, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. And he came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light, John, that is. He came only as a witness to the light. In verse 9, the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God because he was going to reconcile us to our Heavenly Father through his death and his resurrection. In verse 13, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God through the Spirit. Verse 14, the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. So as we see there, the light of Jesus is the grace and truth of God. And that's what he spoke to us. When he spoke the truth and love, he spoke of the grace and truth of God, our Heavenly Father, who sent him to us to save us and not to condemn us. So Jesus told his disciples in the Sermon on the Mount about how to be the light. The Sermon on the Mount is where Jesus explained all the things that were a spiritual nature that he wanted his disciples to, to learn over a period of time. And even after the three and a half years of ministry with his disciples, they still had a long ways to go to fully understand the depth of the spiritual principles that he gave to us in the Sermon on the Mount. But we want to go to Matthew 5, verse 14. Matthew 5 and verse 14, because Jesus is going to talk to his disciples, and that means us today, as the salt and light. We're going to be looking at the light in verse 13. No, I'm sorry, verse 14. In verse 14, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. In other words, we're a city on a hill, each one of us. So we may not want to be the city on a hill. Maybe we'd like to just kind of go through life not being noticed at all. But when we become children of God, when we become the light of the world, we, He wants us to be on that hill where we're noticed as to who we are, how we act, how we live, and what we say. And so He makes us the light because He lives in us. He is the light. And we become the light because 
we believe in him. He doesn't want us to be hidden. In other words, in verse 15, neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Or perhaps another way of expressing that, you would, if you had a lamp in your house today, you might have a lampshade over the light so that the lampshade directs the light within a certain area. It doesn't cover the whole room because you want it to be on a certain area where you're sitting, as an example. But Jesus says to us, you just take that right off of yourself so you can just fill the whole room with the light. <clears throat> Instead, they put it on its stand, you know, a lampstand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In verse 16, in the same way, let your light shine before others. Now, sometimes you say, oh, I'm shy. Well, the light isn't shy, though. We might have a personality that's shyer than some, but the light's not shy. We have to let the light do what the light does, and that's what we're going to talk about today. What does the light do? Well, it, it lives in us. We are that. So, how does that light express itself according to what Jesus is asking us to do? Let your light shine before others. So we've got to be willing to say, okay, I'm not mine anymore, Jesus. I belong to you. Please guide and lead me today that they may see your good deeds. Okay, that's one thing. But then that also they will glorify your Father in heaven. Now sometimes watching a light makes us perhaps say, oh, that's great. I wonder where that came from. And perhaps the Father would receive some glory. But in other cases, words have to accompany the light. When Jesus came and he was rejected by those around him, those he came to save, he had to say things. He had to say the truth of God in love. That comes from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit prompts us to say the things of truth, the truth of God in love. So we have to realize it's not all about us. It's not about what we like or don't like. It's what who we are. That we become this new creation. We're not supposed to be the old us, you know, with a, an orientation, I believe in Jesus. We're a new us. We have to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, as Peter tells us in 2 Peter 3.18. So we realize that, you know, it's an exciting adventure to be the light of God, the children of light. And that's what we want to appreciate today. Now, Jesus was persecuted, as we saw in John 1, for being the light. And he tells us over in John 15, as he's preparing to go to the cross, he's telling his disciples this very important fact. John 15 and verse 18. John 15 and verse 18. If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. Verse 19. If you belong to the world, it would love its own. We see that today. You belong to a certain group, the group loves anybody in the group, but they might hate others outside of the group. But we're in the group who believe in Jesus. We're the group who says, I believe that Jesus is the light of the world and I belong to him. And therefore I'm a child of God and I also am a child of the light. As it is, you do not belong to the world. See, we belong to Jesus. He paid for us with a great price. But I have chosen you out of the world that is why the world hates you. That's the pure and simple truth of the matter. So, light, we are, we are the light, light. We have to accept that truth and then be the light. In verse 20, remember what I told you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they obeyed my teaching, they will also obey yours. So you see what they did with his teaching. Certain ones believed and certain ones did not. Verse 21, they will treat you this way because of my name. And you notice how the name of Jesus is reviled today. But to us who believe in Jesus, it's held high in great esteem with glory because we know who he is. For they do not know the one who sent me. See, they don't know the Father. They don't know that the Father sent Jesus to us so we could be reconciled to our Heavenly Father. 
He died on the cross, forgave us our sins, rose from the dead to give us His spirit life for eternity so we could be reconciled to our Heavenly Father. They don't know our Father. And so they badmouth Him, Jesus, the bearer of God's love to us. To bring the light to us. To take away the darkness in the world. And we are the light bearers of Jesus today. So as we go to 2 Corinthians 5, I want to say Happy Father's Day to our Father God. <laughs> this is Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to our Father God. We are so blessed to know you, Father, through Jesus reconciling us to you. And Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. But without our Father God, us being fathers wouldn't have much meaning. But knowing our Father God, now being a father gives us great meaning in our families with our mate and our children. Have a wonderful day. Over in 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 14, we see the story here of God's great love for us. Our Father's great love for us. Verse 14 in 2 Corinthians 5, for Christ's love compels us, you see, because He's showing us the Father's love. Because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. The old man or the old woman in us dies as we believe in Jesus. And we become this new creation. And He died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for Him who died for them and was raised again. So we have to say, whatever our personality is, I don't belong to myself anymore. I need to grow in the grace and knowledge of my Lord and Savior. It says that here in verse 16, from so, and from now on we regard no one from a worldly point of view. We see people from a spiritual point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, a new creation has come, and we are that new creation. The old is gone, the new is here, and all of this is from God. God loves us so much, He made us a new creation in His Son Jesus. We become a spiritual person of the Spirit. We are a child of God. We are connected to God in the Spirit, to our Father, to Jesus, to the Holy Spirit. We're this new creation. And we say, whoa, wow, what's going on here? Well, it's a wonderful work of God in us to bring us to Himself like this and be our Father and we be His child. So God wanted that relationship that had been broken in the garden because of the sin of Adam. It had been broken all that time, thousands of years. And finally the Father said, Go, Jesus, go, my Son. Restore all things and reconcile me to my children. And that's what Jesus did. Verse 18, all this is from God who reconciled us to Himself through Christ and gave us, the children of light, the ministry of reconciliation. So what does the light do? The light is a part of that ministry of reconciliation. And you say, well, what is that? Well, the whole Bible is full of it. It's explaining what the ministry of reconciliation is. God's whole history here is wanting us to be reconciled back to Him, being reconciled back to Him, and then carrying that message to the whole world. It is such a glorious message of God's love for us and the relationship He has with us in Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit as we then live in Him and He lives in us. As it says in John 17. So He reconciled us to Himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation that God was reconciling the world to Himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. So even though we're sinners, saved by grace, God doesn't focus on that because Jesus has already forgiven the sin. Now He's looking at us from the standpoint of relationship in Him as His children. And therefore, He wants us to focus on the good news. And He is therefore committed to us, in verse 19, the message of reconciliation. He said, my children, I'm trusting in you. I'm giving it all to you to share the good news you have about you being reconciled to your Heavenly Father. 
the one no one knew, Jesus said, no one knew the Father until he was reconciled to us. And now we know him. In verse 20, the, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors. So we represent his kingdom on earth as ambassadors, and that kingdom is his kingdom of light. As though God were making his appeal through us, and he is, he is making his appeal through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. So for those of us who don't like to speak very much, what are the words we need to speak? Be reconciled to God. Directly out of the Bible. See, this is what the message is. If you don't know what else to say, say to the person you're trying to help, be reconciled to God. And if you say, well, I don't know what that means, well, I think we ought to, we ought to study that and find out what it means to God and to us. Because in verse 21, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God as his children today. See, we're supposed to be as ministers of reconciliation. He gives us words to speak. It even tells us in the Bible if we're going before a judge not to worry about what we're going to say because the Holy Spirit would inspire us as to what to say. Don't you believe that our Father would give us the words to say if we needed to say something. I believe that. I used to be a very shy person. I'm not a shy person anymore. I'm a new creation like you are. And we need to be willing to speak as the Holy Spirit inspires us to do so. But remember, what's the message? God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life because we'd have a reconciled relationship with our Father and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Over in Colossians, the first chapter, we see how we are the ambassadors now of the kingdom of light. Colossians 1 and verse 9. Colossians 1 verse 9. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. And that's what the church does today and the children of light, that's what they do. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives. And that's where our life is. We count on the inspiration of the Spirit. So that you may live a life worthy of the Lord. Isn't that what we all want to do? Isn't that the kind of light we want to be? And please him in every way. Do we want to give the glory to God? and being the light that we are, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, the light would give the glory to God our Father. In verse 11, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience in these troubled times, in these turbulent times when we don't know what to do, but we need to be true to ourselves we're the children of God, but we're the children of light. We're the ambassadors of Jesus' kingdom of light. And that's what Paul, the Apostle Paul, is going to show us. In verse 12, And giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you. So not only are we reconciled to our Heavenly Father through Jesus' death and resurrection, but then the Father has qualified us to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. We have to advance the kingdom as his ambassadors, as his children. Now Jesus could do it any way he wants to. He's the King of kings and Lord of lords. But he has chosen to use us, those who believe in him, to advance that kingdom in the world today. You say, well, how is he going to do that? Well, because the Father is going to draw people to Jesus whom they come into contact with us and by whatever way God inspires us in, in dealing with people we contact, He's going to call and draw people to Jesus. That's how it's going to happen. And we say, well, I don't understand. Well, then we need to just walk in faith because that's the way it's happening. And the more we do this, the more we understand it. 
So here it is. We have been qualified by our Father to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. In verse 13, for he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness. And we might see darkness all around us, but Jesus and our Father have rescued us from that kingdom of darkness. And he's brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves right now today. And in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. The greatest blessing we have is knowing that our sins have been forgiven and we live in the grace of God. We have all power because we know that truth. So when we see anybody, no matter who that person is, we start off with, God loves you. You've been forgiven. Jesus has forgiven your sins. Now this is when you get into that tough time, you know, we don't know what to say. The Holy Spirit is going to prompt us if we understand the words here. We are the representatives of the kingdom of light. And remember what the message is? Be reconciled to God. So we need to use the main spiritual weapon that God has given to us every day of our lives. The Apostle Paul was under constant attack because he was taking the gospel message to all of Europe. And the devil didn't want that to happen. And so he knew he wasn't fighting against people, but against spiritual wickedness in high places. But he gave us this one main tool to remember always. We need to remember the tool of prayer. So if you'll please turn to um, Ephesians, the sixth chapter. The spiritual tool of prayer, it's always there with us, always. Paul also says we ought to be instant in prayer. In other words, you have a need, you pray. You have a thought that needs to be prayed, you pray it. Someone comes up to you and they need prayer, you pray for them. We need to pray because the enemy is always attacking us, but we have the advantage. Jesus already beat the devil. He's already won the victory. So we realize that we have this tremendous spiritual tool right here in our very hearts and minds. And it says in Ephesians 6 and verse 18, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. It doesn't make any difference how you pray. It's that you pray in the name of Jesus. He said, oh, I don't, I don't know how. Well, sure, sure you do. Whatever you could say to anybody that you cared about, <laughs> pray that way. Well, it doesn't match something else I heard. Well, don't worry about what someone else is praying or how they're praying. You pray the way you feel comfortable to pray. And you know, the more we pray, the more natural it seems. Because it is natural. We're in this most wonderful, loving relationship with our Father. He says, just say anything to me, child. I just love your voice so much. Every time you say something to me, oh, it makes my heart melt. And we think, oh, maybe I'm not doing it right. Have we ever known a child? towards a parent or a grandparent who does it wrong. <laughs> a child's words are always precious. We're never wrong. We're always right in what we pray. So pray that way. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Just pray, pray, pray. I pray all through the day. I go to sleep, I say my final prayer for the day and I ask for sweet dreams and he gives me those. And then he carries through and does all the things I ask him to do in the night when I can't work anyway and get up and have a fresh slate, have things done that he's already done because I've asked him to. Then I start praying again. That's my main weapon. That's your main weapon. And verse 19, pray also for me, the Apostle Paul is asking for. I'm saying that for myself. I'm saying that for you. We need to pray for one another. I need prayer. I have a gospel message and I need to get it to the world. I need your prayers to help me do that. Pray also for me that whenever I speak or whenever you speak, words may be given to me so that I will fearlessly make known. Because we just believe in Jesus. So no matter what happens, I still believe in Jesus. Take my life if you will. But however, no one can take our life until Jesus says it's over. So, be fearless. 
Know whose hand you're in. Know whose kingdom you belong to. <laughs> you're going home for eternity if you, if you happen to leave here now. But we need to be wise. God has wisdom that he gives us to know when and what and how. So whenever I speak, though, the words may be given me so that I may fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, that the gospel about the relationship being restored with God, our Father. That's what Jesus was sent here to do. Because when the Father's will is done, Jesus is saying, Hey, I did it, Father. I did it exactly like you wanted me to. And the Father says, my precious son, you are so bright. You are such a wonderful son to me. And because of that, I'm going to make you the King of kings and the Lord of lords over all the creation in heaven and earth. And that's the way God works. God loves the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit love each other. And they've been loving each other for eternity. And they've included us as their children in that relationship for eternity. And here we are, the children of light. And we have been given the mystery of the gospel, for which I am ambassador in chains. He did his greatest work in chains in Rome. That's when he wrote most of the books of the Bible, from what I understand. And it changed the world. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. And that goes for all of us, doesn't it? Pray that we will be fearless as the children of light as I should, the Apostle Paul says. So as we're being fearless, we need to realize that Jesus has done it all. He has uh, cast the fear out of our hearts because the Father's love that He's reconciled us to has cast out the fear that had been in our hearts. And His light cast out the darkness of the world. We see over in 1 John, the first chapter, in verse 5, the closing thought for this sermon message today. 1 John 1, verse 5, This is the message we have heard from Him and declare to you, God is light, in Him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with Him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. See, the light has no darkness, therefore there's no lying at all. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, with those who also are in the light. But we're then praying for each other as to how we can help people that we contact in our daily living, at work, in the neighborhood, in our family, so that we can span the kingdom of light where we live. And the blood of Jesus, we're always mindful that He paid the price of sin. His Son purifies us from all sin. And now we live in the grace of God as a child of God and the light of the kingdom of heaven. And we are so blessed to know our Heavenly Father as our Father. So again, Happy Father's Day. Please join with me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for loving us and sending us your Son, Jesus. Thank you so much for reconciling us through your Son, Jesus' death and resurrection, that we could be your children, that we could know you as our Abba Father, that we could realize that this is who fought, Jesus was leading us to know and to receive because he told us all about you. And we believed in him, we could see you. And that's what you brought us to. A reconciled relationship all the way from the Garden of Eden to now. Help us to be your children of light. Help us to fearlessly express the gospel message of being reconciled to God. Because Jesus has made it so. We now can call you Abba, Father. We thank you. We ask for your blessing, your guidance and direction this coming week. That you will strengthen us and inspire us. It's in the holy name of Jesus that we pray and ask these things. In Jesus' name we pray and all together we say, Amen.